This is my coaxial bicopter. It runs iNav 3.1 and is capable of some autonomous flight. This is going to be the first of a five part video series that's going to detail the complete assembly and software setup of this bicopter. Once I release the fifth video, CAD files will be made available. In this particular video, we're going to focus on the assembly of the TVC system. To start off, let's make sure that we have all the hardware necessary to complete the build. Two 38 millimeter sections of 1.75 millimeter push rod, four linkage stoppers, six number six 32 three eighths of an inch uh, long machine screws, six M2 uh, screws along with uh, threaded inserts, two 1.5 inch number six 32 screws, one number six 32 screw that is cut to 33 millimeters in length and to need nine number 632 uh, hex nuts. Also including onto that hardware, we're going to need two Emacs ES08MD2 servos. Now that we're sure that we have all of our hardware, we're gonna make sure that we have all the 3D printed parts. The main TVC can, full motor mount, the Y-axis gantry, the X-axis gantry, and some 3D printed spacers. We're gonna start by removing support material here and on this top area over here. It can be quite tricky to get the support out easily, but best way I've found to do it is just to grab the flush cutters that come with your printer and kind of just go at it. Most of that seemed to come out pretty easily. So our next piece will be the Y-axis gantry. Just important to exercise some caution around the arm where the linkage mounts. That's kind of a little bit of a fragile piece along with where the servo mounts. Also, don't forget to remove the support in the uh, holes for the uh, servo mounts. This part can be quite tricky since uh, it's hard to kind of get in there with any tool, but if you use the, uh, the like nozzle cleaning needle from your printer, it can kind of make the process a little bit easier in loosening the piece up a bit. It's also not a bad idea to just use support blockers in these locations to avoid that hassle altogether. We're now done removing the support on the Y-axis gantry. Now we can move on to the motor mount. So our motor mount is going to be fairly simple in terms of removing the support. It's just going to be to remove the support on all four holes there, the piece on the center, and the piece on the bottom. And there's the motor mount with all supports removed. And now we can move on to the last part with supports that need to be removed, which is going to be the uh, X-axis. The X-axis gantry supports are pretty uh, simple to remove. We just have four pieces under each mounting pole and uh, two pieces that are covering the uh, slot for the uh, Y-axis. Oh, also, we uh, need to remove the uh, pieces covering the holes for the bolts. If you're having trouble removing the support between the uh, main casing holes, uh, the best option would be to, well, in uh, your slicer software, just put support blockers there because it shouldn't be necessary to have support or use a little bit of an undersized drill bit to aid in getting it out. In this case, I'll be using a 330 seconds. Now that we've removed the support material off of all of our parts, the next step is going to be to enlarge our uh, holes for our threaded inserts slightly by using a 730 seconds drill bit. I forgot to mention that you'll also need to enlarge the uh, four holes on the x-axis gantry that mount to the main case. This next step will focus on installing the threaded inserts into the x and y axis gantries. We're gonna need a couple different things to complete this process. If you look online, you'll see multiple different ways of people 
You'll see multiple different ways that people like to do this process. However, the way that I find works best to me involves using a blowtorch, some pliers, and also one of the screws. The idea here is to thread the screw into the insert in order to prevent any molten plastic from getting stuck in there. Then we'll use the pliers to hold it from the tip. We'll heat it with the torch for a little bit. Then we'll insert into the PLA, kind of line it up, allow it to set for a little bit, then back the screw off and then repeat that process for all of our other holes. So we'll begin by heating our insert here with the torch. All right, once we get it in place, we got a little bit of time to kind of mess with it a little bit to ensure that it's somewhat straight. Doesn't need to be perfect. Once we back out the screw there, we're ready to start on our other ones. Another thing to point out when installing the inserts is that the, there's two different ends. So if you see this end, you'll see that the opening is a little bit wider than if I were to kind of flip it over here onto uh, this end you see the opening is a bit more narrow it's important that you install the machine screw starting the threads into the uh, way with the wider opening that way once the thread goes all the way through you'll see that it's pretty sealed down there if you were to install it on the reverse side, generally it'll work just fine, but that just kind of increases the chances of a kind of plastic getting jammed in between and, and locking everything up. And once complete, you should get something looking like this. And once completed, the Y-axis gantry should look something like this. Let's move on to the next step. Now that we've completed the threaded inserts on all of our parts, the next step will be to install the linkage stoppers on the Y-axis gantry and the motor mount. For this, we're gonna need some Loctite and uh, our linkage stoppers. We're gonna start by applying some Loctite to the threads of the linkage stoppers. It's very important to allow time for the Loctite to dry thoroughly because if you printed the parts in PETG and install the linkage stoppers with the Loctite still liquid, the solvent will dissolve parts of the PETG and will cause it to become very brittle. The next step is to install the uh, linkage stoppers into the uh, Y-axis and motor mount. This process is fairly simple and straightforward. Once again, it's very important to make sure that the Loctite is completely dry if you are using PETG, but all you have to do is insert it and ensure that it is facing outwards and then throw the nut on the other side. Once it's complete, it should look something like this. And should be fairly snug. The same process applies to the motor mount. However, we need to insert the nut and kind of press it into this uh, slot that's provided. And once the nut aligns with the hole, you can simply thread the, uh, the linkage stopper on and it should be just about the same tightness, fairly snug. Now we have our linkage stoppers installed onto our Y axis and motor mount. It's now time to install linkage stoppers onto the servo arms as well as center our servos. From the little accessory pack provided with the servos, you'll want to remove this horn and the machine screw. We'll proceed by using a uh, 3 seconds bit to enlarge the uh, outer most hole on the uh, servo arm. And 
once you're done, this should look something like this so that we can now fit the uh, threads of the linkage stoppers into, into the servo arms. Also, it's important to include a washer in between the, the hex bolt and the linkage stopper so that it can rotate without tightening or loosening the nut on the servo arm. Installed on the servo, it should look something like this. This next step is gonna focus on centering our servos. This step is important because we wanna minimize the amount of offsets necessary in software to have the uh, gimbaling system at its neutral point. This can be done in multiple ways, but my personal favorite way, mainly just because I'm cheap, is to just use an Arduino and some simple code. The code, which I'll show on screen now, makes the Arduino sweep 180 degrees and then center in the 90 degree position, which is gonna be the center position for five seconds. During that time, you can unplug it and then place your servo arm in the center where it needs to be. I'll demonstrate that here. So it's plugged in, we can hear it moving. And now that it has stopped, we have five seconds to unplug it. Then we can install our servo horn, which looks like it's gonna be about there. Once completed, we can plug it back in and see the result. Looking pretty good. We can then install the uh, machine screw on top to fix it into place and then uh, do the same to the second servo. And now we're ready to install the servos into our X axis and Y axis. So starting with the Y axis, we're gonna wanna make sure that the servo wire is pointing upwards and we can essentially slot the servo wire into the little hole and push the servo through. Should be a fairly nice fit like that and then we'll put the machine screws in. If the alignment of the inserts are slightly off, it might be helpful to install one screw partially and then start the third of the next one to ensure that they can both fit in nicely. Once completed, we should have something that looks like this and the servo should be very secure in its mount. Now, we'll repeat this process with the X axis but this time, the servo wire is still going to need to be facing upwards, but we only need uh, one machine screw that's going to go into the bottom there. I mentioned to mount the servo, the top servo, the x-axis one, with the uh, wire facing the top side. Well, that was a lie. I told you incorrectly. It should be faced the other way with the wire facing the bottom, and it'll be kind of looping up like that. We need it to be this way so our linkages can be on the same side. Now, we're ready to actually start putting stuff together. We can begin by placing the motor mount with the linkage facing the same way as the servo horn and lining up the holes into the y-axis. Once we get the holes roughly aligned, we can go ahead and grab our longer spacer and insert it all the way through. If the spacer isn't coming in easily, I recommend drilling out the holes with a 1364 drill bit. And you can see that now our spacer comes in a lot easier. Now we'll grab our modified 33 millimeter screw and uh, the 632 hex nut. We'll place the screw with the pan head facing the uh, side of the uh, Y axis uh, that has the smaller inset. The one with the larger inset is designed for the nut. Once completed, the nut on the back should be a little snug, but it's very important that this remains fairly frictionless and nice and smooth. Now we're ready to tie the uh, x-axis to the y-axis. This is going to be done in a similar fashion to the y-axis as we're going to align the holes. And I can also recommend drilling out the holes if the, uh, the 3D printed spacers aren't fitting correctly. Then we'll take our smaller insert and a 3 8 inch number 632 screw and we will place the spacer onto the screw. That'll give us something like this, which we can then push through this hole and line up with a nut on the other side. It's good to install both sides without the nuts 
uh, to ensure that it's still smooth. But as you can hear when I move it, there's quite a bit of uh, friction kind of between this little rough area where the supports were. So I'm going to go ahead and disassemble this real quick and do a little bit of sanding to make it smooth. And now you can see the piece is much smoother after being sanded. So now we want to make sure that our movement is free. We have nice free movement in both axes after sanding it. And we can now go ahead and install those nuts and get to the next step. Our next step is going to be installing our push rods here and here. When installing the linkage for the motor mount, I like to start on the motor mount by pushing the uh, rod all the way through and then following up with the servo, kind of lining up that hole there and pushing it in. When installing the push rod, it's important to lock down the linkage on the servo first, then center the servo, and then align it with the uh, center line of the motor mount, then lock down the uh, linkage on the motor mount. That's one axis tied to the servo. There should be very little play in the whole process. Once completed, we should all have something that's looking like this. Getting closer to finishing up. You should be able to move it on both axes and there should be very little play when doing so. So now we can begin the final steps of installing the gimbal into the casing. If you want to contrast the letters, like seen on this casing, then you can follow these following steps. If not, you can go ahead and skip ahead to the time step. For contrasting the letters, it's fairly simple. All you're really going to need is some sandpaper and a sharpie. Uh, this is particularly 150 grit, but anything around that should be okay. What I'm going to do is just sand on the letters, that way we can remove the grooves, for, or remove the layer lines from the uh, letterings and kind of make it a more flat surface for the ink to stick to. The better we do this, the less the ink will bleed onto the other layers. Now if we take a closer look, we can kind of see that it's a bit more of a matte and flat surface on the lettering versus if we look kind of somewhere else on the can, we can really kind of see those layers. So now let's try to put some ink on it. I'm gonna take the Sharpie and uh, kind of carefully trace the letters out. There it is, looking pretty good. Before we mount the gimbal to the main casing, we need to test our servos on either a servo tester or some sort of PWM receiver. In this case, I'm gonna be using the flight controller in RC pass-through mode, and we'll just check that it has a nice full range of motion and that it centers the way we want it to. All right, so now our servos are plugged in and active and are locking in their center position, which is clearly not center. Let's go ahead and loosen this and fix that. That looks pretty good, so now I'll fix the uh, y-axis. Now we'll go use a quick test on our transmitter here to ensure it gimbals correctly. Yeah, that looks and sounds pretty good. Now we can install the main casing. So we'll start off by kind of grouping the, uh, the leads together, the servo leads. Kind of grouping them up, make sure they're not getting, they're not going to get pinched by anything, not kind of going in between anything. Then we're going to line up how it's going to go into the casing. So it's going to kind of look something like this, going in down that way. We're going to kind of take note of that hole that it's in the back left corner, and bring all of our wires up to the back left corner of this. Group them, and then put them through this hole. Begin pulling the uh, system into casing. Once you have your holes aligned, we can proceed by fixing the casing to the gimbling system by installing our four machine screws. And there it is. The TVC system is complete. Last thing we need to do is test just to make sure it gimbals freely and we're good to go. All right, once we install the case, we can plug it back in or do our last gimbal check to make sure that it's clear across the full range. 
Looks like it bumps just a little bit there at the edge, but that shouldn't be a big deal as we're never gonna need to move that far in range and it will be limited in the software. Thanks for watching and make sure to stay tuned because in the next video we're going to be working on the landing gear and the top prop guard assembly. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.